Okay, so I didn't really think about this until now. Um, when it comes to rigging or like weight paint in general, some people have a little hard time grasping the concept of how uh, weight paint really works. Um, and so you notice that whenever you go into weight paint, if you ever do, um, when you start, depending on if you're on draw or not, I have my weight is zero, uh, you see like these colors. And to kind of understand how these colors work is blue equals none, meaning it's least important, as you could say it. Red being the highest, most important, stay in place to whatever it is you're doing type of thing. Um, and anything in between, uh, so if we, if we view this as a importance level rather than colors, you can kind of understand it a little better. So blue being least important and red being most important. And so when you start going in between the two, uh, if I blur it out a little bit, um, from one bone to another, uh, this kind of tells how much is, is being affected in between the two bones. So we're going to go over here to our gradient tool. This is a tool that I commonly use um, all the time. It's the only one I use when I weight paint. Uh, it's a little hard to grasp at first because... The gradient tool, unlike the draw tool, whereas if you use the draw tool, it's only on one side. Whereas the gradient tool is, it goes through the whole thing. And this is what I commonly use when I do anything, really. Um, I feel like it just works a lot better for me. So I'm going to show you an example really quickly. We're going to do a very harsh not blended out weight paint real quick between all of these bones this might take a second um so usually what ends up happening is people complain that their weight paint um looks really like choppy or it has like hard edges and so this will help you kind of understand um why it's important to blend uh weight paints and how it works so i'm just trying to do this as fast as possible so right here this is what usually happens for a lot of people um you get weight paint oh crap we don't want blended okay you get a lot of times where weight paint is like cut like cut off chopped like this right and so if we go into play mode or not play modes, I'm sorry, I've been in Unity. Uh, in pose mode, when we go to move these, you see how it's like, you know, really like, how you say, not, not, not the greatest. Kind of like this. So if we go out of pose mode, I'm pretty sure I added enough, just in case. Um, I'll subdivide it one more time. Or, there we go. Let me show you again. If we bend it, uh, you get these hard edges. We go out of pose mode. Uh, we get these hard, nasty edges like this. And a lot of times people don't want that. Um, so you can kind of think uh, as your bones on your model being the bones in your body. The weight paint is going to be your muscles that are wrapped around your bones. Um, and flexing is going to be the priority of your weight paint so whenever we move our arms and stuff like that our muscles uh flex whether that be a little or a lot our brain tells us to flex and so in unity when we add a side bone component to a bone we're telling it how to act basically is the brain telling it how to flex so we have this choppy not very nice looking uh, weight paint like this so how do we smooth it out and how do we understand how it's working? So, first thing I do is we go to the blur tool. The blur tool is your absolute best friend in making weight paints for clothes, anything of the sort, really. It not only makes your stuff smooth, like flow smoother, um, it just looks so much better and it's, it's, it's just great. So what I'll do is I usually press F and I'll just go over it or you can click, do whatever you want to really. Um, I personally wouldn't white paint it this way, but this is going based off if you don't have very good white paints to begin with. So we're just going to click and, and drag it and, and smooth it out and all of the above. 
I will show you how to um rig something yourself. Uh, we already have a tutorial on it, but I'll show you how I do it personally. So we're just gonna smooth these out, and then I'm gonna go over. Okay. So now that we have these smoothed out, you'll notice that they kind of go over the line of where we want them to be. Um, this is actually important. So this goes back on how our muscles work, um, our flexing, right? So red being most priority and blue being none. We don't want this section to move at all with this. However, what do we want in the middle? So you can tell if we switch between the two, they start to overlap each other. And so what this does, instead of it being that chopped edge, I'll actually show you. If we actually move it, you can see it is smooth. There is no more choppy edge. This is why it's very important to blend out your weight paint um, on anything, really. Uh, me personally, uh, if I was to weight paint uh, an object, I wouldn't use the weights already given, depending on, you know, if I want to be quick with what I'm doing. Um, if my weight paint is, like, super bad, instead of using what they already given me, um, I'll usually just do my own. And it usually turns out to be a little better. So I just obviously make my weight uh, one. And make sure you remember what bones you're doing this on, because if you do it backwards or wrong, you're going to have to redo it. Um, so we're on bone, which I know is at the bottom. I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to... So the gradient tool actually pretty much, like I said, it's it's a gradient tool. So it kind of already does the job for you. You don't really need to go in and, and do much work. This is really sloppy, but you kind of get the point. So the less the less you move it, the the less it's smoother. Again, I would go in and make this smooth, but this is just an example of how you could do it. Go in and smooth it, blah, 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 blah. It's pretty much the same thing. This object is a little different because it's just a cylinder, but depending on how something is made will depend on this. But anyway, uh, another thing um, you'll have to keep in mind when you weight paint something is the poly count. So this has an extreme poly count on it, our faces, as you would say. If we were to um, actually, ooh, yeesh, okay, um, let me unselect that, that did not help at all, okay, okay, that'll work, we can worry about that, so if we start to unsubdivide something, ignore the tops, um, you will notice that when we move it, it starts getting like a little crunkly, a little, a little like not super smooth. Um, this is just because you don't have a lot of um, faces for it to really bend. Um, the more faces there are, uh, the easier it is for something to bend smoothly. You don't have to have like a million polys like this, obviously, um, but you could definitely go in like let's say. Let's say that we did uh, have just like this, ignoring the top and the bottom. Um, like, let's say you're at like an elbow. Um, so you're anywhere you, where you're going to be doing a lot of bending, like the elbows, the knees, the the shoulders, the neck, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You want more uh, edges there than anywhere else on your model. So you can just go to loop cut, and you can cut a loop. Hopefully, depending on how it's made. And you'll give it more to work with. Um, so I kind of hope that helps on how to understand how uh, rigging and stuff like that works. Whenever you bring it into Unity um, and you start playing with the side bones and you start, you know, uh, fixing up some of your work a little bit, you'll notice that it'll actually look a lot better and it'll look a lot smoother. I definitely recommend uh, try to make objects and rig them. And then you have experience in learning how to rig it, and you'll understand it better. I feel like you're not really going to understand unless you play with it yourself. Um, so definitely practice rigging yourself, even if you start out on small things. That's what I did, and I started to improve. So definitely practice, and you'll get better at it. But this is just a basic understanding of how to do this.